Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you a rose and coconut burfi, a really simple sweet treat that goes beautifully on a thali but also separately just if you fancy it. Now the best thing about this recipe is that it needs no specialist ingredients or skills to make. Sound good? Well hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any posts from me and support my work and then let's go. I've used two cups of fine desiccated coconut here because it's just so incredibly readily available. And we're going to hydrate that with one cup of warm whole milk. Desiccated coconut can have a plasticky way about it. So this just rehydrates and brings the whole lot to life. Mix it well with a spoon, incorporating all that fine coconut in. You'll start smelling coconut in the air and then leave this sitting around for a few minutes while you crush the seeds of six plump green cardamoms. Warm half a tablespoon of ghee in a pan set to medium heat. The ghee will give the sweet a little squidginess at the end and it just adds a little extra luxury to the whole affair, I find. I've used Bengali Bonolokki ghee. When it's melted, dip in that hydrated coconut and milk and you'll see, you can barely tell that there was milk in this. It's just lovely and feels like it's mimicking fresh coconut already. Then we want to move this around quickly in that warm ghee to make sure it doesn't stick or burn un unevenly anywhere. So just really mash that into the ghee, mix it in really well um, until it's roasted. So you'll see it drying out. And also the color darkens a little bit to a deeper shade of golden. Tell you this already smells so good and we haven't even add added the cardamom yet now of course you can make this with fresh coconut if you have access to it or some frozen shredded coconut but that needs a whole new recipe which i will share later for now please use the desiccated version so in goes that cardamom powder you can buy cardamom powder ready-made but crushing it fresh is just so much more powerful and aromatic so I would definitely recommend that if I were you that's what I would be doing so stir that really nicely into the coconut mixing it well together now for a tin so that's about 400 grams of condensed milk the whole lot goes in I love eating condensed milk out of a tin. It's just so delicious. This, by the way, is a sweetened version, so you don't need any additional sugar. What we're going to do here is add a teaspoon of rose water. Rose water can be quite sickly if you overdo it, so a teaspoon is about fine for me. Um, but obviously, feel free as the chef to have a little taste and see what you think. We're going to move this around on the medium heat. Um, very quickly just to make sure it doesn't stick and you'll see the mixture slowly drying out and you know it's done when you pull it to one side and it doesn't spread so it should be very very thick and almost getting quite difficult to move around so your arm should ache a little bit now the words line a baking tin fill me with dread so i'm just going to use a sheet of baking paper and tip some rose petals onto it this is my very own idiot proof method, by the way, that does not follow any rules. And for this, I do not apologize. Uh, so yes, yeah, so just literally tip some rose petals over roughly. And then we're going to get our um, coconut burfi mix and just tip it onto that rose petal bed. You'll see it's still quite warm, this. Um, so just be a bit careful. You want to roughly get it where the rose petal bed lies. But again, don't worry too much because we will be shaping it in a minute. Once the burfi mix is on that baking paper and you've scraped every morsel of it off and not eaten too much of it while you're at it, uh, just literally shape that. Shape that whole slab into a, a rectangle. 
So give it that sort of burfy rectangle shape. This bit is quite therapeutic. I love doing this. Uh, no hard and fast rules. I just find it's easy enough to do with a wooden, a flat wooden spoon. You could use a spatula as well. Whatever you've got lying around really. But you'll see the kind of rose petals get nicely adhered. And you have a tight block of burfi. It doesn't take terribly long either, to be honest. I love getting kids to help with this, by the way. So this slab essentially goes on a plate and goes in the fridge to set. You want it to harden and it comes out looking a bit like this. So stick a little chopping board on it, flip it over with the plate. And then you'll see it's got this lovely smooth top thanks to the baking paper. Peel that top off nicely and look how gorgeous that is. Who would tell that it's this simple to make honestly now we grab a little knife and just cut it up into squares i've made mine quite chunky because mine go on the diwali thali but also they will probably just end up being enjoyed for snacking so i don't want them too tiny but then yes like look this is again not something i excel at i don't like cutting things into evenly sized cubes or squares those words fill me with dread, but do the best you can. Cut them up into pieces and then you can pop them in an airtight container in the fridge to sit for when you're ready to have them. They're fine lying around as well, to be honest. They don't lose their shape or anything. Of course, you're going to have to try one to see what they are like before you share them out. Look at these gorgeous sweets. Don't they look amazing? And by the way, they're delicious because I tested them on my neighbors and friends too. So look, I suppose all that's left to do is pop them on the thali and then, of course, to give them a little taste test. These are so incredibly Moorish. Mm. I'm utterly divine. The rose is really subtle. They store well in a box and no one will believe how easy they were to make. I hope you enjoy them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you for the next one.